Guten Tag, Moin und Servus. My name is Austin and in this video I will be sharing my top 10 favorite memories as an American living in Germany for one year on a cultural exchange program called CBYX. You might recognize me from my list videos comparing the US and Germany, but it all started back in 2016. I was a young, starry-eyed Auslander exploring the great land of beer and bread. Everything from surviving Karneval and eating Spätzle to attending German high school and accidentally interning with a German engineering firm. Yeah, I'm still not quite certain how that one happened. Anyways, we are going to jump right in, but do make sure you stay to the end of the video for my bonus memory, aka my single greatest achievement in life to date. All right, so first on the list, we have Oktoberfest in Munich. So when you ask Americans about Germany, nine times out of 10, Oktoberfest will enter the conversation. So as a little Austauscher with a flying thing ticket to Oktoberfest land, it was my dream to attend the famous festival in Munich. Luckily, I was living around Nuremberg at the time, so I just split a Bayern ticket with my friend and we bravely Regio Bond down for a day trip. And it's so funny because I can clearly remember the Bond doors opening and just being met with just this thick wall of warm beer smell and the sweat of already drunk German men. So anyways, after exploring the grounds a bit, we managed to find some space in a Biergarten outside of one of the tents where I got myself a proper Oktoberfest Bier Mass and a pretzel and some cute German girl photobombed my vlog, um, effectively checking all three of my requirements for the day. All right, so some hot takes from the festival. It was expensive, it was way too crowded, waiting in line for the toilet is the worst, and after dark, the vibe changes to something almost post-apocalyptic. However, I think it's a must-have experience. I mean, the design of the grounds and the tents are true technical marvels. Trying to sing Schlager music is a blast. Drinking beer out of a comically large glass will never get old. And, you know, plus watching drunk people in costumes do stupid stuff, that's pretty awesome too. Also, I did make a vlog of my Oktoberfest adventure, and the video includes like this fun stop motion drawing thing that talks about the history of the festival, so if you want to, you can check that out. So you may not know this, but the 1965 film Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder was largely filmed in Munich. This is one of my favorite movies of all time, so a visit to the filming locations was an absolute must for me. Most recognizably, you can find the gate that everyone watched Willy Wonka first exit the factory from. The building is not quite the same, but everything on the exterior is. Um, the other notable landmark is the bell tower, which you have to kind of like walk around the building, but clear as day, it's like right there just as it was in the film. Moving on, we have traditional restaurants. So if it was healthy and affordable to do so, I would eat traditional German food all the time. Whether it's the ambiance of a dimly lit Keller restaurant or the high ceilings and lively atmosphere of the Hofbrauhaus, a German styled meal is best eaten in, well, German style. So when I think back on my favorite memories of Germany, I often land on the nights going out with my host family to family owned German restaurants uh, scattered around the area we lived in Bayern. Some of my favorite dishes are the pretty common ones, and please excuse my accent, I have not been speaking German recently. You got Jägerschnitzel, Käsespätzle, Kartoffelsalat, Blaukraut, Sauerbraten, and Kartoffelknudel. Think I got all those right? And beer-wise, I would always try to test different beers, especially the dark ones like Keller beers or Bock beers. Uh, but of course, you can never go wrong with a Rattler or Hefeweizen. And if you want to know what my very first German beer was, you can check out my video on my top 10 memories from my first two months in Germany when I was living in Bonn. So next up is German high school. So I attended German gymnasium in Herzogenaurach, the birthplace of Puma and Adidas, something I always mention to people to make my life sound just a little bit cooler. Um, so I had already graduated high school, but my program thought it was wise to place participants in a gymnasium just for the experience of learning German and hopefully to make friends. Um, that being said, the school didn't really know what to do with me, so they kind of just sprinkled me in a bunch of random classes with different age groups, which was fun, kind of. I mean, my pal Moritz and I did ball hard on some crossword puzzles in Frau Wagner's fifth year class, uh, but all in all, making friends my own age was a little harder. My strongest memories, to be honest, are more the differences between gymnasium and American high school. I'll go over a few of them now. Number one, American high school is classes 9 to 12, so 14 to 18 year olds. So it was a little weird at the gymnasium uh, where the ages of kids running around 
are as young as like nine and 10. So number two, uh, in the gymnasium, if a teacher wouldn't show up, then the class would just like be canceled. Uh, in America, this would not happen. You always have a substitute teacher and class is never just canceled. Number three is like the German students themselves. They were super organized with their papers, writing on like graph paper with pen cases packed to the brim with like 30 felt tipped colored high end markers. There was like white out and rulers and fountain pens. And to me, it was all very impressive, but definitely overkill. I mean, when I was in high school, I would stroll into a class hoping that my only black pen was still going to work after being washed in my jean pockets the night before. Number four is sports class. At the school I was at, they just played like badminton or volleyball every day. And I thought that was interesting. Um, in America, there's more diversity in the day-to-day -day class. And um, actually you basically aren't required to even have a physical education class um, after the ninth grade. Um, and number five is that only a few people that I knew who were 18 could drive cars. Um, honestly, that's a big cultural difference. They are so relaxed in the US with driver certifications. You can get one when you're 16. Actually starting when you're 15, you can drive with a parent. And then by 16, you have a full license and it doesn't really cost that much. And I even had a friend do his driver's test and passed in a Tesla with autopilot on. So big difference there. I also made a few videos about my time in gymnasium, including one where my friend Melissa from Zimbabwe and I talk about our experiences. So moving on, we have Christmas in Nuremberg. So winter in Germany is a bit depressing. You wake up in the dark, you come home in the dark, it's cold, it's gray, but hey, December is Weihnachten Zeit and the land of beer and bread, the holiday season does not disappoint with beautiful Christmas markets, unique traditions, and of course, Glühwein. I think I got lucky living close to Nuremberg because even though it might not be the largest in Deutschland, the Christkindlesmarkt is certainly the original with great traditional style and city architecture that just sets an incredible mood and backdrop. Some of my favorite nights in December were just walking around the Christmas market with friends, checking out all the shops, drinking Glühwein out of like the seasonal mug, ordering a hot and ready dry and Wegle, which is like a traditional Nuremberg street food. And of course the night would not be complete without a few bites of traditional Nuremberger Lebkuchen, which is basically a gingerbread wafer that was invented in the city, which is perhaps one of my favorite baked goods of all time. In regards to Christmas itself, one of the biggest cultural differences is opening presents on the night of the 24th compared to in the US, which of course is famous for the Christmas morning on the 25th. So that was a fun, unique experience I had with my host family. Also, we don't really have St. Nicholas coming to collect our lists and fill our shoes with oranges on the 6th of December. And of course, I couldn't talk about Christmas in Germany without talking about the Christmas pickle. Germany, you're weird sometimes, and I love you for it. So Carnaval in Köln is a lot of things. Boring, uneventful, lame are nowhere on that list. This was probably one of the longest, most crazy, and most fun days I had in Germany. I mean, Bonn and Cologne are just on fire with energy and floats and music and costumes. Compared to Oktoberfest in Munich, Carnaval in Köln is an event I seriously would go back to year after year. But what really surprised me was just the sheer volume of stuff that is thrown from the floats into the crowd. And it's not just candy. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of candy, but there was also like books and pens and phone cases, just weird random stuff. We collected so much stuff actually that when we got home, we decided to make a video reviewing our dragons collection, which is a pretty fun watch, especially because we are very, very sober during the whole process. So number seven on the list is the Autostadt. So one of my favorite days during my gap year in Germany was a trip to the Autostadt in Wolfsburg, a shrine built by VW for VW about VW. Honestly, I don't really care about cars. Me, not a car guy. But there's no denying that the Autostadt is cool. Built literally right next to the factory, the park has so much to do. Inside, there are a series of pavilions dedicated to all the VW subsidiaries, many of which have interactive walkthroughs. There is a museum, a hotel, a test track, and two huge silos that house a variety of VW cars. We spent probably like five or so hours in there just walking around, checking out the campus and goofing around, looking at cars and stuff. Wolfsburg itself I thought was a cool town. It's very unique and I actually made a few vlogs about the times that I visited, but I'll talk more about that in my top 10 favorite German cities video. 
All right, so moving on is working in German firms with Germans. During the year, I had two three month long internships with German companies and they could have not been any more different from one another. And I think you will agree. So the first was a production studio. So it was just like filming and editing and stuff. And the second one was a engineer bureau for Bauphysik. So German engineering. And I'll talk about both of those experiences in greater detail in another video, but here I'm just gonna talk about some of the things that I thought were interesting about working with Germans. First of all, the amount of English that everyone spoke kind of surprised me. Like, I don't know what my expectations really were going to Germany, but I didn't think that everyone would speak English as well as they did. Moreover, everyone was like so interested to talk with me about the US, um, especially with like blunt questions about politics because it was in 2016 before the election. Another thing I learned is that Germans are very work hard, play hard. So Feierabend uh, was an interesting concept. So, you know, work your tail off in the office and then the evening is relaxed time. Another expectation I had was that Germans in the workplace were going to be very like serious and hardcore. But what I actually found is that everyone is like super nice and sympathetic. Like they would all eat lunch together and have like open discussions and had really good relationships with one another, um, which was just really cool. And finally, there's one important thing I learned about Germans, and it's that they are actually pretty biased towards American baked goods compared to German baked goods. And I ran an experiment in my office to test this, and I called it the German cake hypothesis, and you can check out this video by following this link or clicking on something in the description. So number nine is the Sommerrollerbahn in the Frankische Schweiz. So my host family during my exchange year was simply the best, like they were awesome. If I wasn't traveling on my own during the weekends, it was very common that we'd pile into a car and go somewhere to go sightsee or explore a city. And one of my favorite places we would go visit is the Frankische Schweiz, a beautiful little pocket of Franconia that looks a bit like Switzerland, which is where it gets its name. Anyways, tucked away in all the scenery is a German mountain coaster, aka a Sommerrollerbahn. And this thing was so much fun. There were two routes you could take. One of them was on rails and the other was like a downhill toboggan style. So the toboggan was fun, but if you kept the brakes off the whole time on the coaster, you would go like way faster. And even though I've been to a couple more mountain coasters over the years, this one always will have a place in my heart as the first and of course the one that my host family took me to. So finally on the list before my bonus memory is taking trains and buses. So I didn't grow up with trains or taking buses. In America, most places simply don't have that kind of infrastructure. So for me, the abundance of these services was kind of just like magic. Of course, taking a busy Regiobahn on the way to work can quickly lose its charm, but a trip with a long distance ICE, that will always be special. When I look back now, some of my most fond memories are long travel days on trains, simply sitting with my backpack next to me on a quiet ICE, looking out the window as the German countryside passes by. I mean, there is a sense of freedom and adventure to it, booking a ticket and exploring the new Hauptbahnhof. Moreover, for me, a train ride represents and facilitates the excitement of starting a new journey. I mean, the doors would open and I would take that first step thinking, huh, I wonder what's next in store for me during this crazy, fun year abroad in Germany. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time that you have all been waiting for, the bonus memory, my life's greatest achievement. Here we go. So I planned a trip and bought a ticket to a faraway city for the single reason that I thought it would be a funny joke on my vlog. What was it, you ask? To Essen, Essen, and Essen for Mittagessen. Boom. Mind blown. The moment has been well documented and if you want to watch the vlog, the link is down below. Well folks, that's the end, but before you go, bitte schick mir ein like and let me know what you thought of my list with a comment and uh, let me know where in Germany you're from. Also, I've got plenty more Germany content, so if you wanna hear me speak German and talk more about Germany land related stuff, check out my channel or click on this playlist right here, also found at the top of the video's description. Vielen, vielen Dank, bis bald, and goodbye, and see you later, and until next time, and adios, and ciao, and sayonara.